we do the smaller amount of work. You guys are doing the networking, so you get what is advertised. So if we say that £4,000 job, that will go on our site and I say the finder's fee for this is £3,200. That will go to you if you take the job or if you refer the job to somebody who takes it, it gets split 50-50 between both of you. Um, plain and simple, because we, we toyed with saying, well, actually, is it down to the individual who sent the job or is it down to the person who takes the job? Plain and simple, it gets split between the two of you. I and think that's great, though, because it, it, it relies on a, a trust bond of that person then staying in the job as well, doesn't it? And not So you only get that. And, yeah. You only yeah. get that if they pass the probation period. And if they don't pass the probation period, the entire sum goes back to the practice. So yeah. they don't lose out. The individual doesn't lose out because hopefully if they go somewhere and it doesn't work out, they actually get some insight into why. Nice. Um, we don't, so people can take a maximum personally. They can only take a maximum of two jobs in a year. The reason yeah. that is the case is that we don't want to encourage people to job hop for profit. Mm -hmm. But what we do want to encourage is to say... Sarah, I wish I could, um, but it, the hard part with practices, Sarah, is that a lot of them are just time pressured. Um, mm. But but for us, we really don't want to encourage that job hopping sort of mentality. Um, so it's a case of saying, look, you guys are all responsible adults. Every one of us, because let's face it, there's not many of us vets who have got six figure salaries. Um, every one of us wants to get that little bit extra cash that maybe pays for holidays or it maybe pays for the service or MOT on the car or whatever it is that you're saving for. It might be that you're saving for a house deposit, but you can squirrel that money away or you can splash out. It's yours to do with what you want, just as long as you tell the tax man about it. Nice. I like that. Okay. Thank you for that. That's a brilliant, brilliant model. So that's one that's obviously come about through Ben's interest, which is the recruitment angle. Um, have we, uh, did I see right that Jen's just joined us? See you there, Jen Gale. Hello. Would you like to share with the group your business model for online? So anyone that doesn't know Jen, go and listen to her TED Talk. Um, it should be up by now, shouldn't it? So Jen launched the whole UK time stream um, yesterday. And Jen runs Sustainable-ish, which is a brilliant, brilliant book if you haven't read it. Um, but she also put on an online festival recently and off the back of that has got a membership option that is, um, a, a, from what I understand, and Jen, you're, you're going to give us the detail on this, but this is a, a program that lasts for a certain period of time that people pay money for. So that's another model of online business. So Jen, would you like to tell everyone about it? Hello, sorry I'm late. I feel a bit rude, just like gate crashing in late and then like, listen to me. It's a great business model. It's a great oh, well, um, so yeah, I started online eight years ago. We spent a year buying nothing new um, randomly as a family and um, started a blog about it and sort of started to develop a bit of a following and um, and for a long time, wasn't really quite sure what to what to do with that following and having built up a blog that's all about, you know, not buying anything new. It felt a bit, um, it was not strategic. Like, you know, I couldn't really advertise on the blog and all that sort of thing. So that was quite difficult. Um, I was really lucky to get a book deal um, with Bloomsbury. So my first book came um, and that was on the back of... Um, you know, having having this blog, um, I was invited to give a TEDx talk during the year. Um, wrote, you know, invited to write some pieces for the Guardian, and so and and I'm not like being a like, oh look at me, but it's just to show that like the the power of being online, and I'm just like one ordinary person and able to to share that message. I do think it um, it is hugely helpful, and now I've got this community. I've got a Facebook group with like sixteen and a half thousand people in it, and um, you know, a, a, a big well, I say a big, about 50,000 sort of all in online community. Um, and, and I think, you know, you don't have to have those numbers to get things like book deals and stuff like that, but it does, sorry, my, my biscuits are just cooked. <laughs> I'll, just, I'll just send my husband off. Um, so, um, uh, so, you know, it, it, does, it does have power, it does have sway. Um, and for, for me, it's been a really brilliant way of getting kind of a message out there. And the thing I guess that I've really struggled with is then how to, how to monetize that, how to turn that into a business. And a lot of that has been around, um, I guess, sort of money mindset and the fact that like I'm doing this because, you know, I feel like it needs, it needs doing. We all need to be stepping up and doing our bit for the planet. So then there's that guilt of like, I shouldn't be charging for this is the stuff that everybody needs to know and all that that's sort of really thing. But, that's really um, when it's so yeah, so I had the, um, got the book deal with Bloomsbury and then, um, 
yeah, during lockdown, I was just like, what, what am I, what am I gonna do? Like, I had this massive, like, oh, this, this is rubbish. Like, everything's rubbish, can't do anything. And then um, just went, oh, I, did. I saw a friend do an online festival and I thought, oh, I could do that, I could have a go at that. And um, so yeah, within, with two weeks notice, I just decided to do this. We had 40, 39, 40 events. We had, um, I don't know, 60 odd speakers maybe. Um, I had two and a half thousand people come and join this sort of pop-up festival group. Um, and it was all free, again, completely unstrategic. Um, but actually, again, um, it helped to reinvigorate me, helped me think like, this is something people are still worried about despite everything else that's going on in the world. And, um, and then, um, yeah, kind of off the back of that, I, I was, cause I did a six week program back in January or February, I think. Um, but I was just like, oh, people are too busy with Corona and you know, nobody wants to be doing that at the moment, but actually had this amazing feedback from the festival. And I was like, people, people do need this, people do want this. So, um, so yeah, I did the second round of my six week online program. So that's coming to, coming into our last week next week. Um, and I'm just thinking about, um, about now whether to sort of um, just pivot that model and it's something I'm hoping to work with you Libby on. Um, yeah. Yeah, is, yeah. Is, you know, can we either have that as a, as a sort of rolling program or whether we can, um, whether I can sort of create more of like a, a, a long-term membership sort of mentorship thing so that people come and do like six or 12 based yeah. units and then they're sort of there for the accountability and the community and all those sorts of things and accountability blurted at you all for <laughs> brilliant that's brilliant Jen it's lovely to hear real world examples because so much of what's online unfortunately unfortunately is owned by snake oil salesmen and they give you this get rich quick message and I hate that I hate it because it is possible as Ben just said on chat if anyone's looking at that it is possible to do something ethical and moral and that the world needs and that you are good at and that you can give us a service to the world and still earn a living from it yeah I'm so bloody passionate about that message getting out there because it's you know authenticity to me is bloody everything it's everything i can't feel good about myself if i'm feeling like i'm gonna rip people off it's got to be an exchange where they value the service you're giving for more than they value the money sitting in their yeah. bank and they want to give you that swap it's called flow for anyone that's interested there's a really cool book on this subject which is about the psychology of optimal experience and it's all about getting in flow state. And Jen is completely in her flow in this and it suits her down to the ground. So she should be able to monetize that relatively easily. So there are, there are a couple of different models of online businesses. Jen is doing a, a mix of the do it with you and the membership model. So roughly speaking, we've got a do it yourself, which is where you buy a course, like learn the ukulele in two weeks. You've got the do it with you model, which is this idea of accountability showing up, you know, and, and a mentor guiding you through it. Then you've got the do it for you model, which is more sort of one-to-one -one coaching. So you can, you can position yourself as anywhere within those pots, if you like. And um, what Jen's got that's really powerful is a zeitgeist message. You know, this is the zeitgeist now of, of we're trying to come back to a, a greener return from COVID. And so it's perfectly positioned time-wise to hit that zeitgeist square in, in between the eyes and hope, hopefully it will be the right time to monetize that. It's not always the right time. So I've done a session for this um, uh, summit on right goals and timing is such a big part of when you launch something that you've got you've to be really precise about what the market needs. And it's not just about you having an idea. You know, we all have 10 of those in the shower every day, but it's about it being something, um, and I talk a lot about the three Ps, People have got to have a pain that you can fix and they've got to want to pay attention and then they've got to want to pay for it. So you can apply the three P's to any idea that you might have sort of floating around at the moment as being something that could be a possible income generator for you. Um, thank you, Jen. That was really helpful. Um, Katie, can we go to you? And would you like to tell everyone how brilliant you've been this month? Oh, thank you, Libby. Um, yeah, I suppose my background originally was as a small animal vet. I did my internal medicine certificate. I know a few of you on the call, so I'm sure you know that bit already. And through my own journeys with imposter syndrome, which was totally out of control, um, I went through a, a journey where I had a lot of coaching and I went on a lot of courses and I learned a lot, which phenomenally changed my life but didn't change how I handled the business. So I got to the point after I'd learned that of 
thinking, you know what, I want more balance. I want more flexibility. I want to do these things because I want to, not because they're out there to prove my worth. And I went down the route of locoming, which I love. There was flexibility, there was more money, but at the same time, I was very aware that I was still just trading my time for more money. And there was still that point where I thought, if I want more money, I'm just going to have to work more. And as I figured out more about what I wanted, minus sort of that imposterism jumping in, I thought, right, there must be another way. And what I did, I started off looking at a lot of what Libby talks about, these snake oil salesmen that were like, you can get rich quick. And believe me, if there's something out there, I've tried it, like affiliate marketing, drop shipping, Forex, the stock market, like everything. Like my poor other half was like, every time I come back for an event after three days, you have a new plan. Like, what's the plan today? He said, I'm scared to actually leave and come home because there'll be a new plan. And in the background of this, I was sharing all my experiences of imposter syndrome. I was building a huge social media following. And I always felt very similar to Jen of, I can't charge people for this because I'm just putting out all this good out there. I never want anyone to feel the way that I did because um, I've got a talking imposter syndrome on the, the event. Go see that. There's loads of stuff about what actually happened to me everywhere because I just talk about it nonstop, but I won't go into that now. But I always very compassionately feel that nobody else should feel like that. And that's a real driver behind what I do. But at the same time, I was kind of ignoring this huge mountain of stuff that I had and I was pursuing looking for the next thing. Like if you go on one of my emails, I am signed up to every single free webinar junk email that you will ever find. Um, and I was getting to the point where I'd have so many ideas, but I'd never actually progress anywhere with them. And anything that I did do, like some of those things that I talked about, I did make money out of, but they felt more like they were due, due to luck or with the stock market, for example, I felt like it was more due to gambling than actually any skill involved. And I wasn't completing, like Jen talks about in the chat, that icky guy where you've got that mixture of like, you love it, you're good at it, the world needs it. And eventually you've just got that central sweet spot of the four things that make you think, right, this is for me. And Libby will tell you very much, I, I jump on an idea straight off, like nobody needs to tell me twice to try something, which is both a, a gift and a curse at the same time. And again, like I say, going back to my story, I, I don't do it now just to prove that I'm, I'm worthwhile. I'm just like, this is fun, let's try this. And I'd seen that Libby was um, looking at starting her team your brain to get online. And I said, yeah, I'd, I'd be really keen to jump on board. You know, I've got a few ideas in the background and I know now from my sort of personality type profiling that I don't follow ideas through unless someone's badgering me to do it. And I think one of the biggest things about having Libby is that there was always that accountability there to know that I had to do the next thing and not just look for what's the next idea that I'm going to do? What's the next idea? Right. Shiny penny syndrome. Yeah. yeah that's that's so it. Common. But that, that's the thing when you've got loads of ideas, they come thick and fast and you, you sometimes need to just slow down, to speed up and you sometimes need to just, block out chatter and just really hone in on what is my mountain of, of knowledge what is it that I've got to give the world and that's why I love that icky guy concept as Jen said it's it's so powerful and if you haven't seen this guys I'll drop a, um, a graphic into this event afterwards but it's so powerful because it's all about Katie has this ability but honing it and then harnessing that and making it go forward is a different ability that you may or may not have Definitely. And like Libby says, it was just kind of figuring that I'd spent all this time looking for the next thing and the next thing and the next thing. And kind of, it was just right there, like earth, just there. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I'll go to the moon. And you're like, well, there's a perfectly good planet just right, right down here that Jen's just sorting out a saving if we, if we head back down there. And I guess it just, first of all, like I say, there was the accountability aspect. Also just looking at stuff that, you know, aligned with my values you know it was all all right going out and doing forex and sitting terrified all day of whether i'm going to earn a lot of money today or whether i'm going to lose a lot of money and what i ended up doing because again i had all the ideas they were all in the background pretty much a lot of them were like 70 percent done i just never felt right about them until i aligned all those things and and went through that process and i actually i launched um a mastermind for people with imposter syndrome, mainly vets and nurses, which in about week two, I was like, right, I've just got to do it. It's there. I've just got to crack on and get it out there. And I did. And it filled up and the second wave filled up and I earned more through those, those sort of two waves than I would have done normally for the month as a vet in employment a couple of years back. And that wasn't a huge amount of my time, 
and I wasn't overcharging anyone and everyone was more than happy. They were thrilled with what I gave them. And I think it was that awakening of you've got this skill mountain, you've got the things that you can give, you enjoy doing it. And I figured out more about, like Libby says, where I actually get my flow and what I enjoy doing. So hopefully that helps some people because you probably, well, you absolutely are all sat on something that people will yeah. be able to, to pay for and you can and, monetize. And this is the thing is that people are so blasé is this unconscious competence thing we get so blasé about what we can do we forget how many years it's taken us to get to that point where we are absolutely mastering a certain thing and some of that could just be betting so i will urge you all please go and look at a website called absolute dogs i do this in my course because it's so eye-opening look at their numbers and do the maths for me they've got a membership site of 299,000. They've got 14,000 of those on a paid membership site that links through. They charge those people 30 quid a month. Do the maths and look at, and that's one vet and one behavioralist that got together and look at when that site was set up. It was two years ago. And guys, we're in this zone where we can absolutely utilize the tech that's at our disposal if we're brave enough. And I've, I've posted on one of the threads, I've, been, I've not been on here today because I've been blooming busy. Um, so I've got a lot to reply to. Um, so sorry if you've messaged me and I haven't got back to you, but there was one thread, I can't remember which one I posted on, you know, sometimes you've got to throw yourself off the cliff and grow wings on the way down. And sometimes you've got to be that brave to launch into something that might feel uncomfortable. And there's something about flow state where as soon as you put yourself in your zone of genius, opportunities come up. They just, things start to open up and things start to happen. So sometimes it's about being bold and taking a step that might feel a bit uncomfortable at first because it is out there. And as, as Katie and Jen and Ben can all show, and me as well, I've got business that's entirely online since um, 2019. I made that leap, even though it's completely out of my comfort zone. I've had to ask Katie for help with the tech today. And Mel, I see you're on. Thank you for helping with the answer. Of, How do I do this on my Zoom? I don't know what I'm doing. Because tech isn't my strong suit. And if I can do this, anyone can do this. Because I've had to, I'm a single mum of three. I've got only myself paying the bills. I've had to show up for my girls and I've had to get creative once I got hit by a car and I couldn't do vetting anymore. That damaged my neck. Surgery is obviously a large part of most of our jobs. I had to get creative and I had to be bold. So I'd started learning this stuff in 2018. Um, I've invested very heavily in, in training up on this so that I could then do it effectively. Because like Katie says, you know, there are so many things out there. And I think you've tried Bitcoin as well, haven't you, Katie? which is yep. one of the really common, like, ooh, let's try this. Tried um, them all, honestly. Like, if you see something there and it looks too good to be true, I'll tell you, it's too good to be true. Like, you're absolutely right. And the more they tell you to get rich quick, you know, the more likely it is to be utter bollocks, unfortunately. Um, you know, these things take work, they take time. But this is one of those questions of what do you need, how much time do you need to invest? So as Katie said, she spent, I think, 12 hours over the evenings um, investing in that. Uh, Jen, I, I'm not sure of your structure of your mastermind. But I'm not sure what your timeline is. How long did it take you roughly to build up your following online, Jen? Oh, like it's been, um, I mean, that's like I said, I, I sort of started, we did this year buying nothing new 2012, 13. So, do you know, like, because um, you talked to us about the absolute dogs people and they've, you know, they've got this amazing following. Um, and, and I think you, it's much harder now to grow a, um, an online following. It's certainly much harder um, to do it organically. Like all mine has been organic. I don't know how much those guys have spent on, um, yes. you know, Facebook ads and things like that. Um, the Ewok on the door. Is there an Ewok? Oh, oh yes. <laughs> <laughs> My youngest absolutely adores. Um, is that one wicked? I'm not sure. That's brilliant. Um, I have seen the Ewok. It's underneath the cat box. We've got Ewoks everywhere. Um, <laughs> So, you know, it has, it has taken a long time and it has, um, and it's been kind of slow and steady, but I think had I been um, braver and more strategic, I would have been able to monetize much, much earlier. Yeah. Um, that takes, you know, there, there's so much, and that's why one of the modules that I do is entirely about your limiting beliefs around money, because it's so bloody common and it's so powerful when you read your own money story back and you go, holy crap, have I been carrying that around in my head? And one of the biggest things is this ability to honestly charge for something ethically and soundly. So I'm from the city. My background was management consultancy and their fees are ridiculous. So maybe I've got it easier than most because I'm not afraid to charge a decent price for 
a, an exchange of value. But with something like sustainability, Jen, that is a classic soft spot. Equally, vetting is a bit of a soft spot. So that absolute dogs model, really, I love using it because it's something that showed, it shines the light on how much knowledge we have as vets that is already in our hands, that's already there, that can be monetized because I think we forget and we're so used to giving it out as an exchange for a, a relatively low salary that we don't perhaps value it as much. And the trick is when you turn that knowledge and you shine the light outside of our industry to normal people, like how many clients do you think would be willing to pay you for a course about choosing a puppy, taking it to the vet for the first time, loading it in the car the first time, helping it through the first night. That's all stuff that we have in our head that we don't perhaps always get the chance to say in a consult, but they need to know it, don't they? And, and they want it and they want that knowledge. And so that's a real classic example for me of the, some of the things that can be. And guys, I've seen courses built on crazy stuff, like how to hit the high notes on a clarinet. And that's the power of this market. <laughs> if you've got something that is your zone of genius. Um, so one of the models I use to give you a couple of examples for me is uh, I've got an online tutoring business. So I have three kids on a Saturday morning for a super school. And that's three hours. I charge each child 125 pounds. Because guess what? To do a vet degree, you know more than GCSE maths and science. So you can tutor both so long as you follow the, the curriculum. And, you know, so I earn that 375, which is probably more than some locums get for a day's work. I earn that in three hours. And that's a really, really simple model to set up. And I can teach that really fast. I get people up and running for a tutoring business in a week. It's really simple. But I've also had a music school running where I've, I've up to now obviously gone into schools and taught a glee club after school that's kids singing i get to sing taylor swift and dance around for an hour like <laughs> a room full of 30 seven year olds and that was a really easy model to set up and implement that's a little harder to move online but it is still possible and i still do one-to-one -one music lessons online um and all of all of these things are, are potentials out there and i just want to i wanted tonight just to be about opening your eyes for you know what what is possible out there because it really really is and, and katie and jenna are a brilliant example of who's um, already gone out there and done stuff that I've taught them and made it real, made it happen. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm with you, Jen. The, the whole thing about trying to get my team to do thirds. What are thirds? Who knows what a third is, but that's what they do now. It's um, hideous. So in terms of how to get your ideas going, um, Ben, if you could share, what was the tipping point for you that made it a reality? Uh, that took it from being just this, like I've had an idea in the shower to making it happen. What was it that sort of moved it for you? I would love to tell you that there was a lot of thought and process that went into it. What actually went into it was a shed load of Stella. Um, yes. So I, I am a massive advocate of fail fast. I, I, I love lean startup mentality. Yes. Um, and the reason behind that is, frankly, I'm not minted. Um, so I have a real difficulty in getting a business off the ground and, and everybody thinks that when you launch a business, it has to be this finished product. It yeah. doesn't, it absolutely doesn't. People overthink and overthink and overanalyze and then look at it and go, well, this isn't perfect. I've got news for you. It will never be perfect. Um, because you'll fix one thing and then you'll go, oh, well, actually, um, that, that, and that, and, and, and that, oh, oh and, and that. There's always something else you can do bigger or you can do better or you can do differently. But in terms of getting it off the ground, find the cheapest, most effective way to do that. Speak to others. And I think that's the first yeah. thing that I learned when I launched Simply Locums was I was really secretive about it for the first couple of weeks and months as I got it going. And actually, I missed that first wave of traction because I was too scared. I don't know, um, I think, it, I, I'm not sure who it was who said earlier about worrying about reputation and so on and so forth. And there's that almost, well, what if I fail? As vets, we fail all of the time. Um, like, you know, and, and I, I'm quite happy to hold my hand up. I mean, no, I'm an average vet at best. Um, but like, you know, we, we, we learn by failing and exactly the, the difference is in veterinary practice, the stakes are a shed load higher than in business other than the financials. Like you could spend 40 grand on starting a business if you want, but I bet you, if you really looked hard enough, you could start that same business for four grand. That's um, so true. And I think the thing to remember about online business as well, you haven't got premises costs, you haven't got flyers, you haven't got business cards, you know, it's so bloody flexible. You can get up and running. My investment was in, a coach to help me 
do it fast. It wasn't in hardware or, or software. After a certain point, yes, you have to engage with the right systems. So I use um, ClickFunnels and Active Campaigns as my back end software. And they're really robust and I can really recommend them. I built my website on WordPress and Elementor, which again, you can do relatively cheaply. Mm -hmm. This is the thing is, is you don't have to be throwing a load of money in it. I've run a couple of businesses in the real world where I have invested 30 or 40 grand in the setup. You don't have to online at all. And the, just touching on the point you made, Ben, about this idea of failing in public, I think, Maya, you raised that about what if it affects your reputation. And the great news is about online business, if you don't go for organic reach, if you go for paid reach, you invest five to seven dollars in each lead, but they're people you've never met and you never will. So if you look at my website, a couple of my products don't even exist on there because they're just on the ether, <laughs> just on the ether. So I don't have to change my vetty reputation. So for example, I'm writing an article for In Practice at the moment about neuroscience and the applied neuroplasticity of behavioral change. And they may not want me to do that in the future if they know that I'm an online course seller because they're <laughs> a little bit conflicted, aren't they? But you can separate out your identities and have two different streams running without tarnishing anything. And also, again, if you do it ethically and honestly, it, it, should, it shouldn't be a conflict, is my, is my opinion. I think one of the big things that people have to identify as well is that we are all guilty of believing our own bull. Yeah. Um, so, and with an idea, that's very easy to get drawn into. This is the idea. This is how it's going to work. And I am not deviating from this plan. And the first person that you speak to who goes, hmm, have you thought about that? It's not actually that they don't think your idea is good, but the insights from those things and the insights from people who will maybe challenge you on what your thought process is are way more valuable than everybody else going to, oh, that's a brilliant idea. You're going to be a millionaire by next you. Thursday. Yeah, Please exactly. remember me when you're rich. Yeah. No, but like somebody blowing smoke up your ass is no use to anybody. Um, like, other than like, you know, if you're on fire potentially, uh, but like, you know, it, just learn from the people who will challenge you on what your idea is, who will sit there and go, why are you doing that? And if you can't evidence why, yeah. then, then you do need to have a think about what you're doing. Yeah. And that's really interesting because one of the um, sessions that I've done for this summit is uh, write goals. And that's such a powerful thing to interrogate your own ideas and to really drill down into, is this, the thing that I need to be doing, am I attracted enough to it? And have I got enough evidence around it? And can you run it through that qualifying um, set of questions about is someone doing this already in the marketplace? Is someone else paying for it? Because then you do get to that point of right, actually, yeah, I could do that too. And you, you almost build your own social proof around it because then you, you, believe, you believe a bit more about the validity of what you're thinking up. Because an idea is just an idea without a plan. You know, it's just a dream. As soon as you plan it and schedule it, it will it will happen but you just need to have someone holding you to account as well if you are a bit bright shiny petty if you are of that mindset um someone like so sarah we did a profile this week didn't we and sarah's come out as really heavy steel that means she's all about data she's all about analysis precision and that needs a different sort of accountability around it because she'll do the writing lists and then following her list by herself but she maybe won't have the belief system in herself enough to push out there and so everyone needs a different sort of tipping point so it's really interesting actually just seeing what sarah wrote in the chat yeah. Sarah, you wrote you can't start a vet practice lean um again just to sort of put some weight behind what i've ju literally just said why can't you start a vet practice lean why can't you start a vet practice out the back of your car with a box of drugs going to people's houses all you're paying for is business insurance on your car and your drugs which you're going to make your money back on and as that business grows a lady called elaine wild with exactly that Ben, because she was so limited when she was looking at premises, but because that's her model. And yeah, she's literally just set up Ambivet. I've been um, sort of gently coaching her through that over the last couple of months. So she's got a, a van, a box of drugs, and she's driving around. And of course, in these times, her business is still able to operate. And she's up and running within, I think I first talked to her in February. So yeah, that's it. absolutely correct. And, it's, and it is that think outside the box bit as well, isn't it? About unplugging your belief system to let yourself go there and let yourself think could I do it this way instead so Katie do you want to say what's been your sort of tipping points that made you get to that point where you were able to monetize your ideas because I know you had been thinking about them for a long time before you came to me and I know you were 
in that zone of, of you had all this knowledge, but you hadn't yet taken that action step? I guess probably partly frustration of trying so many different things. Um, never wanting to completely leave being a vet by any means, but just wanting to get that balance and looking, like we say, at all the streams of income, but trying all those things that weren't maybe snake oil sales or perhaps there was a way to do it, but it wasn't immediately clear. And I think it was partly that. Um, and I think partly probably having it highlighted to me that I didn't re really notice was my other half said, you never finish anything. And I was like, you know what? You're right. I never finish anything. Like I have all these massive ideas. And the only thing that I'd ever carry on with in the background and always do would be my imposter syndrome stuff, my mindset stuff and my social media stuff and I thought you know what I do finish things and then at the same time when I saw um Libby's course come up at the same time I thought you know what I just need to finish something because I've got all of this stuff behind me and I always believed in myself I always thought there's potential to do something and I think that was probably the tipping point of I've checked off all these things now something needs to change and it is that you almost reach threshold, don't you? If you get sick of your own self. You do. Um, and I think as well, like the irony is, Libby, you talk about absolute dogs. And if you want a story where you think you might regret not doing something, I know the people that started absolute oh, dogs. Yes, right. That, that was hilarious. In, in my past, way past life, I used to be a dog trainer. In Whilst <laughs> I was going to vet school, I used to go to the States and train dogs. I'd get flown to the Isle of Man. I used to travel across Europe like we broke records and fly ball and what have you. And I was friends with Lauren and Tom that started that business. <laughs> and yet they're there probably turning over like a million pounds a month or something mental now. And yeah, you just think, wow, it was just, it was there for them. That yeah. skill set has long since, like, I can't remember any of the stuff I did. Dog training has come on a long way since uh, I used to train fly ball. But you guys, everyone has something. Yeah. And it's just knowing what that that something is and at that time I never thought to monetize it or even just make it part of my career path that I loved but every time Libby mentions them it just makes me laugh because I'm like there's Lauren and Tom no that must be sickening yeah. but this is the comparisonitis thing you know that was right for them I think you're going to be so the thing is we when we feel that we're making a difference when we feel we're adding something to the world it supercharges us and the wheels just start to turn and things attract to you and that wasn't the right thing for you. People is your thing. You know, people, yep. you're going to help people. And as soon as that plug comes together, you know, the electricity flows and you're just going to be like, right. And that's why we do an exercise, which is like, look around you. What, what have you bought books on? What do you spend your money on? Where do you spend your time? Because that tells you what you're intrinsically interested in. And you might think you want to do Forex or you might think you want to do property, but very often they're just things that other people are interested in and have succeeded in. And so you spend the money on the course, you turn up and then you realize actually I don't love this. You know, and I, I dropped 15 grand on a, on a trading course with Darren Winters, who's a notorious snake oil salesman because I got a pot of money from the car crash incident and didn't know what to do with it. Didn't know how to invest it, didn't know what to spend it on. So I was sat there going, might as well play with money and make it work for me. I couldn't do it because I, I couldn't get passionate about sitting there staring at stocks and shares. And like you said, Katie, it felt like a gamble like you win and you're gambling you know I wasn't helping the world I wasn't helping anybody because to me it's about helping people and that's my core it might not be your core but whatever your core is is intrinsic to you and that's why you know business in a box is never going to work so thank you for that Katie so Jen do you want to share what your sort of tipping point was that made you maybe take action about um particularly like when you launched the festival what was that that triggered you um I think I remember saying to you, like, I'm just bored of getting in my own way. I'm just bored of, um, the festival felt... I think you used the F word though, didn't you, Jen? I yeah, I think I probably did, yeah. <laughs> um, the festival, to be honest, felt easy felt because easy. there was no money involved. There was, um, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't charging people for coming. I wasn't looking for sponsorship. I, I was just able to do what I loved doing and to connect people and to communicate with people and share all these amazing ideas without having to worry about that. So to me, that felt really easy. Um, the thing that, you know, that I really struggle with is the, the 
asking for money I just want everybody to like me and and therefore if I'm asking for money like some people aren't gonna like that and I just have to step that up and get over it I think really um because you know I've, I've spent eight years pretty much putting everything out there for free yeah. and I guess there is an element of kind of retraining the my audience and um retraining my own brain I guess to kind of, um, this is okay and I guess that's one of those things that is, you know, very intrinsically important in this market with sustainability. Um, and by the way, I'm speaking for Mary on the Tuesday's event. I don't know if you're going to that as well, but um, the lobby to try and get more attention from politicians about the sustainability. And it's so bloody critical that we do begin to do that, that you hopefully will, uh, will feel your value set adjust to the need to charge for it to start making it more important to the people because you know when we when we ask for a price we intrinsically make more value to the offering that we have and that's something that's really important to remember is that if it's free it sometimes is worthless and when we price accordingly and when we when we're bold enough to say this has value you should pay for this then people see the value in it and they they you know, will be more attracted towards it. It's a really weird little twist of behavioural psychology, but there is something really important about putting a, a price on your own head and valuing your own worth and valuing what you've got to give to the world. And that also has, has got lots of data around how it then attracts different behaviours to, to your own than, than it just being free. So I hope that's been useful as a quick run through for everybody. Um, we can open mic now if anyone's got any questions to ask our lovely people that have kindly come on board to tell you their stories and I'm happy to help obviously anyone that wants help and please do sign up to my newsletter on um, chemcaron.com because that I'm doing free little bits of neuro coaching on there um, I've also got a Facebook page Libby KT Kim Karen, and you can drop me a line at libby at chemcaron.com or contact me through Hoover um, really, really happy to talk through, bounce ideas and have, oh, and the kittens, I'm doing kitten videos, just to entertain our little tired brains during COVID. I've been filming a little litter of kittens growing up and just turning the camera on then while I do some free sort of 10 minutes of neuro coaching. Yes, I am the kitten coach, according to Katie's other half. Um, and equally, if you want a profile done, get in touch for that, because I'm really happy to do that um, for everyone as well. And I think that's the best place to start your business is with a thorough knowledge of where where you flow what your flow state is because it's just so pivotal to understanding what business suits you because not all businesses suit all, all types and like katie is um very high dynamo energy and equally blaze energy so she needs a business that's around creativity and people so in the gym and they both come out as, as as a star profile which is all about presenting and being on stage and being at the forefront whereas to steel that's intensely uncomfortable and then really wouldn't be their flow and would knock them off their perch if they had and Sarah's nodding at me <laughs> so for a steel energy they're better off doing a do-it-yourself course a DIY course that they write the modules record them once sell them to many whereas Jen and Katie are better off doing masterminds where there's interactivity there's people there's flow around the human contact bit and that is so bloody powerful to know where you're best putting your energies into business and I wish I'd learned this stuff when I was in my 20s and I was you know out there in the city running businesses where it, it, it's so important because your rates are so high your office location is so high that that you know you lose money if you're in the wrong flow so thank you for coming everyone any questions oh and i forgot to say there's a new facebook page as well that i've set up called veterinary entrepreneurs training club where i'm dropping those kitten videos as well if anyone wants to see so join that because that's where we're going to all support each other sarah you've just joined haven't you i saw that pop up and um yeah, just, just, just in case anybody's niche online idea was kitten training. Sorry, you're too late to the party. <laughs> kitten training is done, Ben. Done. <laughs> but that's free. That's an example of a lead magnet where I've I've got those pieces going out into the world because I thought it would help people because everyone's circuits were going nuts. And so it was calm the circuits, calm the circuits. What can I do that makes people calm down? So I filmed some kittens whilst talking to them about what they can do with their brain biochemistry. And as a result of that, I think I've generated about 6k of income this month from people that have then reached out to work with me on different things. Um, I mean, kittens. What's wrong with kittens? Best thing in the world, isn't it? So I did it. And Sylvia's put a question about the profiles in the chat, Libby. Oh, hang on, let me have a look. Sorry, a bit slow, a bit slow on my tech. Um, so the profile is online and yeah, it's very much a um, 
a quiz that you do with a glass of wine one evening when you're nice and relaxed and you just pick which one feels most like me and then it pops out a report and then I do a one hour strategic analysis with you and going through it bit by bit so telling you what it means to your life and and how to apply that so I know Sarah you were a bit um sort of dismissive of just the profile itself but I think you got a lot more clarity when we did the call together because it's not just about the printed out this is your results and the thing with psychometric testing guys is people don't want to be put in a box you know it's not about trying to box you it's about freeing you up to understand what are your gifts what are your talents what are you really good at compared to what is not your flow because the more you can avoid that stuff the more energy you get to do the stuff you love and that's so powerful and it's so important when you're in a business that you do the right sort of business so that you are in flow 80 percent of that time so sorry, i asked because can you hear me yeah hi hi um thanks for answering that um no i asked because i think i actually did um that um but uh yeah i i sort of yeah I got a printed out sort of yes. a few pages of um which was really interesting to read and uh very almost spot on um but yeah no i just wondered whether uh, what you meant when you sort of said you can you know we can do it with you like whether you went definitely through it yeah, with people I mean, or what yeah it's about it's about how it applies to your life, Sylvia, and it's so important to understand. Um, so I've got a degree in the neural mechanisms of behavior, so I'm a classicist. I always look at why do people do what they do based on brain mechanisms. Mm -hmm. And I've chosen the profiling tool that I use because it's uh, the most closely aligned to that classicist point of view. But it also talks about um, what you can be trusted to do and what you should leave well alone and where you add value in a team. So it's really useful for a vet yeah. to understand it. Because being a vet is part of that being a team, being part of that unit. And so I profile whole practices at a time and, and I do whole team profiles and you look at the dynamic of who's in which zone and then you can sort of work out who should be doing which job. So it's brilliant like yeah. that. And um, yeah, yeah, I'm happy to talk through and anyone that, that wants to talk through more about well, this. I was, I was just, my, my second question was, if I send you what I got, do you mind spending a few minutes with me and um, having Sarah, a chat? Sarah did exactly that. She'd already been profiled as well with a company yeah. that hadn't done the full follow-up bit. Yeah, but call him. Ah, okay. yeah, it's Thank really you. important. Um, but yeah, in terms, of, in, in terms of how you deal with setting up an online business, the, the, the big, big priorities are don't just play the comparisonitis game. Don't just do what you can see someone else doing successfully because it might not be right for you. You know, that's right for them if they're successful at it. But you need to zoom in on you first and get really interrogative about what makes me tick. What do I value? What are my beliefs? What, what do I see as important in the world before you do anything like that? Um, so yeah, any other questions? I'm missing the questions on the chat. Sorry, guys. Um, May, yes, people's profiles can change. So for example, I've seen a couple where he was high dynamo. She moved from being blaze into much more tempo over two years. They were a vet team, um, both partners in a vet's practice. To support him, she shifted her entire profile <laughs> to be more about the when and the where, because that's what dynamos are a little bit shit at. So she literally pivoted into that zone to support, which I just thought was the loveliest thing. Um, but it sort of cut her off from what was in her heart, which was that blaze side. And so that's why I do suggest reprofiling if it has been a couple of years since you did it, because it's worth it. And um, yeah, it's, it's all about understanding what your dynamic is as a couple. So I think Katie's convinced her other half to get a profile done just to try and you know, work out their working dynamic. And I made that so. Libby's job to convince him tomorrow. I just want it all over it. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, I did it with my new partner, who's also a co-director with me in my company, and he does all the stuff that I hate. It's brilliant. So I'm, I'm the front end, and I can do all the talking to people bit. He hates people. He just wants to sit at the back and do my website and stuff. So there's lots of ways you can sort of balance it out once you know more about it. Um, and yeah, Maya, that's true. They do them in some practices that I've worked with. Um, the talent flow profile is uh, done as a recruitment tool. So they literally profile people at interview stage and then they work out would they be a fit with the team, which is amazing. That's an amazing thing for me to do. And I've worked with a couple of very, very high performance teams like that over the last three years. Um, so, yes, yeah, so you can get a profile um, from the website for Talent Dynamics and answer to a question on the thread. And you just pay it's $97 or something like that. And then they just send you the profile. But I really, 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 really strongly advise buying it from a flow consultant who will then debrief it with you because the profile on its own isn't worth as much as the analysis and the application of it. 
So that I know I would say that because I'm a flow consultant, but it's really, really powerful when you apply it and when you work out how to leverage it in your life. So that would that would be my thing. Yeah, Belbin's another one. And we do ignore it, Mayor. It's really sad. And this is the difference between what science knows and what business does. You know, we've had the science on this. They were doing Belbin and Myers Briggs and DISC and Prism in the city when I was there 20 years ago. And Vetland is still catching up, still catching up, still catching up. And that's why I'm so bloody passionate about getting this out to people because it's there it's all there it's all there for the taking but you just gotta want to use it so any oh thanks jen that's really kind yeah I, I saw your lovely post on our facebook group actually about how much impact it, it had on you jen and i'm really grateful for that feedback because i think it's really important for people to know that it is a a a benefit in their lives and their jobs it's not just about building an online business it's about your life in general um so any other questions about particularly online because obviously that's what this little session was set up for was to help people get an understanding of what's possible anything else we can help with yeah that's really common Jen, as well <laughs> i think i just jump in and see you know i think there's always a lot of questions about starting online and worries and things like that about it but things that you don't feel you can do at the moment whether that's because of your profile or whether that's just because you've not got the knowledge someone out there knows how to do and the help's there yeah, and that's so true. there's always a way and we've we've now got to the stage where you know this is the fastest growing industry and obviously because of covid it's massively accelerated the number of people that are buying things online and so being at the head of this curve is a great place to be rather than waiting till everyone else has invented absolute dogs and, <laughs> and then sort of looking at it two years down the line again Oh, I could have done that because it is it is one of those things that is very now as ever America is a couple of years ahead of us and I think their industry is worth something like 38 billion or something in the states and um, which is why I got wind of it because I've got an American coach and I cottoned onto this two years ago and started investigating it and went to a couple of really top coaches I did go to a couple of absolute shysters as well and I've wished out their stuff and distilled down what I've learned into my courses because, yeah, I, I, I do believe it has to be ethical and I do believe you shouldn't con people. You should offer this fair swap of value for their money. They've got to want what you're offering more than they want the money in their bank account and then it works. And then it works. So, any more questions before we close? Everyone happy? So, was that useful to everyone? Did you get enough out of that? to feel like it's worth turning up after a long day of lectures and things. Thank you so much for coming and thank you for giving me your eyeballs this time. I hope it's, it's just freed up some boxes for you in your head and giving you some things to think about that are, that are really, you know, going to make you take those next action steps. Cause we do, we do sometimes have to be a little bit bold and say, okay, I might not feel ready, but let's do something anyway. So it's that doing bit that I want to urge you all to just, take control and just say okay i'm going to make the first step because as ben said it doesn't have to be perfect and it doesn't have to be ready you just have to start and jen made a lovely comment about you know you don't have to know everything you just have to jfdi it and just make that first move and be one step ahead of everyone else and then the rest will come to you over time and you can learn from other people that's the beauty of this everybody happy brilliant well thanks so much for coming guys i hope to see more on the app tomorrow um i did ping a recording of this so I'm gonna um, pop that on the Facebook group called Veterinary Entrepreneurs Training Club so zoom onto there if you want to watch this back and then um, come to me with any other questions either through there and you can ask the people in the group there's some really knowledgeable people and like Jen and Katie's following is huge um, but as they say you don't have to necessarily have that much to get started I've got to let you know I've got a following of about I think only a couple of hundred I've not invested any time in building that I've been lucky enough to be able to leverage these other routes to get trade. And I've just had a 10K month this month. So if that gives you some confidence that it is possible and it is entirely possible for you, because if I can do it being crap at tech, you, you genuinely can do it too. So thanks for coming everyone.